Hey everyone, it's Byron again here to testify for Jesus Christ. We uh, last uh, last time we uh, did a video, it was on First Peter chapter one. Got into chapter two. I'm going to continue on where I was. Um, chapter two has got a. In actuality, I just covered about half of it last uh, last time. Anyway, I'm going to read verse one and two, and then get into the uh, to, to the what meaning it has to me. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bith Bithynia. Terrible with those names. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. The, the other video that we did, I talked about, um, actually I talked up through, through the sanctification of the Spirit. Um, but the second verse actually continues on right after that. And I, I like to, to think of this as a chronological sequence in that uh, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. And if you think about uh, your walk with Christ in that light, you can find some scriptural references that will take you back to there, um, to that place where we, we knew we're supposed to follow Christ. But, but how do we follow Christ? And I personally know, I don't believe, I know this to be a fact. I've walked this out in my life. It's through the Spirit. If you go back to Acts, uh, in the book of Acts, you'll notice that Jesus told his disciples to wait in the upper room for the Holy Spirit to come, the Comforter, and he will guide you into all truth. And they waited there. It was 50 days after, um, it was 50 days after his crucifixion that the, uh, the, the Holy Spirit came. And then after that, the Holy Spirit came, the disciples began to do their work. In today's modern teaching, what you'll find is, is that without having a foundation, just like Paul lays in, in Romans, Christians without having a foundation in that we, we, we do sanctification through the Spirit unto obedience, they're given a lot of neat little things to do, like read your Bible every day. Um, and these are good things. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's wrong to read your Bible every day because I do read the Bible every day. But if I believe that the reading of the Bible is simply... The, the method, the, the means of achieving something is not. There's, there's guys in colleges and seminaries, theologians, that know this Bible. They can tell you where every word in this Bible is, but they don't know this Bible or they don't understand what the Bible is saying, and it's because of the lack of the Spirit. So through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience, and Jesus actually said, don't get me wrong here because, you know, People can do some really neat things chopping up videos. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, well, if <clears throat> if you are to continue in his word or continue into obedience or to continue to read the Bible, the word uh, given to us by God, you'll be a disciple and it, it requires a spirit to do so. So my, my whole, almost my exclusive beef with current modern teachings is the lack of the Spirit. Uh, the guy from the Salvation Army mentioned that one of the dangers of this, the 21st century, or the 20th century, one of the two, was that people will try to um, be Christians without the Spirit or something to that effect. You know, the Spirit of God is the key. And us allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives is critical. So here Peter says, um, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. He, he doesn't say obedience and then through things, sanctification of the Spirit. Think back to the time when Peter was walking on the water. Jesus called Peter out of the boat and Peter was looking at Jesus and Peter began to uh, walk on the water. And then the Bible says he heard the wind and he looked or he saw the wind. He saw the wind. <laughs> um, 
but you know when he looked and saw the wind the stuff that was coming at him the the the, the dangers around him um he took his eyes off jesus and he sank and jesus you know rescued him from that from that water the same thing is true today if if we've got our eyes on Jesus Christ, if our faith is solely fixed on Jesus Christ and, and you know, and the things that Jesus Christ did for us on the cross, the Holy Spirit can operate. If our faith is on, well, let me go do these 10 points that brother so-and-so told me to, and I'm going to have a successful life. That's not faith in Christ. If, you know, if for some reason someone says, well, we're going to have this seminar and this seminar is going to have these 12 points, and these 12 points are going to guarantee you success in your life. It's not. Success in our life comes from faith in Christ. It's the simplicity of the gospel. I have faith in Jesus Christ. My faith is in a, my hope. Is my, my every ounce of my being is in faith in Christ. And that enables the Holy Spirit to work in one's life. So... You know, the sanctification of the spirits unto obedience to me makes perfect sense. If I allow the Holy Spirit to operate in my life for the sanctification process unto obedience, it brings obedience. And, and it does. It literally does. You know, there, there, there are times when you're controlled by the world and it, you don't, you're not that obedient. But when you're controlled by the Spirit, you're obedient. And not just obedient to the Word of God or the, you know, the things that you know that are clearly written you should do. But you're obedient to things outside of the Word of God. You find yourself doing things. You know, there's a, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about, um, if, in the Romans, if the, if it says that if, if the Gentiles by nature do the things contained in the law. Well, you know, when it, when he says by nature, I think of instinct. I, I, you know, I like animals and things like that. In the animal world, you see animals doing things they weren't taught. They do it by instinct. They take care of their young by instinct. They build a place for their young to be born by instinct. Well, the the verse says if the Gentiles by nature or by instinct do those things which are contained in the law, they are law unto themselves. Well, if the Holy Spirit is working in my life and I am being guided by the Holy Spirit or my very nature is driven by the Holy Spirit, then I can, by nature, do the things contained in the law or by instinct. And occasionally, you know, there's not necessarily occasionally all the time, sometimes it's very often, God sends you to different places or has you do different things and you're like, I would have never thought of that in my entire life that I should have done that. You know, a simple matter of turning into a parking lot or something like that. So Peter's got it right. Through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience. Uh, Jesus had it right. Wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Paul had it right. Um, mortify the deeds of the uh, body or the deeds of the flesh through the spirit. How did we flip it? How did, how did we get to the point where we're teaching people methods? And these are methods that are, that are sold, you know, very prominently. You know, buy this and you'll get this, or do this and you'll get that. Well, the early guys, the ones that we're supposed to listen to, uh, they actually said through the Spirit, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. Mortify the deeds of the flesh through the Spirit. Wait until the Spirit comes. Keep your eyes on Christ. You know, those things, that's a, that's a constant reminder to us. So, the wording that, that Peter chose and the order of those words, to me, it's very important. Because uh, you, you, you can have temporary obedience. Let me just tell you this. As, as a new Christian or as an old Christian, you can have temporary obedience through Puffing and puffing and blowing the house down. You really can't. But you can't have long-term obedience outside the Spirit of God. And, I, and I've seen this happen so many times in my life and also in other believers' life. Uh, for example, if you get around a charismatic type minister who is, you know, emotional and driving you and things like that, 
you're going to have a temporary period riding on those emotions. But you're not going to escape the war that's inside you, the war that's in the flesh. You have a, in, inside yourself, you have a, you know, a carnal spirit. We don't want to feed that, but we have the, you know, the law of sin and death that operates. And <clears throat> we can temporarily be tough and maybe overcome. Some people even say, well, I haven't sinned. Well, I can tell you this, that if your eyes are not on Jesus Christ, and if you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to operate in your life, it's a matter of time. It's literally just a matter of time. Um, history proves it. The Bible proves it, etc. So through the Spirit, I'll pound that one. I'm going to talk about that one next video too because it, it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. Um, some people sometimes wonder, well, Byron, <clears throat> how do you know Jesus Christ and how do you follow Jesus Christ? But when we ask you, why are you not in a church? That, that you're not there. Well, I guess for, for me, God called me out of, of churches and things like that for another reason. But it's very unlikely that you go to a church in which the minister is literally in the pulpit talking to people about what they, uh, uh, their walk with Christ, who the minister himself has actually laid the foundation that this is through the Spirit. Very often, people are in the audience, people that are hearing, are hearing, do this, do that, do this, do that. And if they were to be perfectly honest through the course of their life, they would have to ask the question, how? And, you know, in a, in a work environment, you can go to a, to a job place and somebody can say, oh, well, just go over there and do this. And you're like, I've never done that before. Oh, well, it's easy. Here, do this. But the same thing is in your life. Do, 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 do. But you have to ask the question, how? And it's all through the Spirit. The rest of the verse, um, it says, uh, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Christ. <clears throat> when you hear sprinkling of the blood of Christ, it refers all the way back to Old Testament times when they were, they would actually sprinkle blood on the altar, and it was a cleansing. They would everywhere that the blood was sprinkled, it would cleanse. Well, Jesus Christ actually cleansed things with His blood, and He does us with His blood. Makes us whiter as, as snow, uh, whiter than snow. And you know, I've got a dream out there where it's like I, I saw Jesus on the cross. Um, that was actually happened to me in this vision where. The blood of Christ was touching me and, and I was turning white on my skin. It, you know, that's the cleansing process. The cleansing process has nothing to do with us other than, you know, surrendering to Christ as our Lord and Savior. Uh, then the last part of the verse, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. I'm going to stop here today. I hope that I have pounded in the, the thing about through the spirit, through the spirit, through the spirit. Um, and, and having these things in the correct order. It's very easy, uh, I've done it, other people have done it, to get sucked into what I call, it's called the teaching of the law in my opinion. But people teach you nice little neat things to do, which leads you actually into your doing and away from the spirit bringing you into obedience. And you can go into obedience through the spirit and remain there much more easily than you can drive yourself into obedience and skip the Holy Spirit. So uh, until next time, thank you.